All right, thanks for joining us here on Chaos to Clarity. I'm meteorologist Bernie Reno. You can follow me on X. I'm at Accu Reno. If you're following me on X, you know I, I did some live streams on this storm Friday and Saturday night. I think everything worked out pretty well with this storm. I, I want to move on to the next one, but I just want to show you this. Now, this is ending this morning at 7 a.m., so you're going to fill a lot of this area in. But, uh, you know, Washington, D.C. is going to end up with six or seven, probably around five or six in Baltimore. I think they had six in Indianapolis, eight in Cincinnati. That worked out. Um, uh, St. Louis ended up eight to 12. We talked about that. If it, if it didn't mix with sleet for a long period of time, they would get that. I think they're at eight or nine in Kansas city. So I think the storm did exactly as we said it would. Again, a lot of this area is filling on in with snow, uh, as we speak. Now I want to get on to the next one. It's time to get on to the next storm. And this is a storm actually that, uh, we, we highlighted back on December 29th. On December 29th, I made this map, and I haven't really changed it much. And it really depends on the energy in the southwest. This could be a flat wave, in which case there's going to be some snow and ice across the south, probably north of Interstate 20. By the way, Texas is in line no matter what. Thursday, Thursday night for snow and ice. I have a snow map for you. I'll show you that. But the question is, does this come up the coast or out the sea? And nothing has changed. If you've been following me on Twitter, we've been talking about what? The Southwest energy. And whether there that Southwest energy gets ejected out ahead of the Northern Trough. If it does, we're going to have a big storm. And that is still possible. And if this storm, you know, gets guided up the Eastern Seaboard, I mean, you're looking at you know, six to 12 inches, probably over a foot of snow in this area. And you can have snow all the way down in, in New England. I mean, in the North Carolina. I mean, that's what's possible. Is it going to happen? I'm not sure. And I want to show you about this, this storm. It's complicated because it's a number of pieces coming together to form this storm. And that's why I think it, the jury's still out. I want to show you this just so you get a sense of what we're looking at here. So you've got the Southern piece, and the northern piece. This is the northern piece. This comes up and around and then digs southward. This will be the steering mechanism. This brings in the cold air. There's a lot of difference in modeling with the strength of this system. As far as the southern piece is concerned, there's two pieces. There's one now across the Intermountain West, and then out in this mess, a piece comes up and around the trough, digs on down, and this is part of the equation as well. So that's why right now, the modeling is going to be all over the place. It's going to go back and forth. I will say this. The European has been consistent that there is no storm because it continues to bury the southwest energy, the southern piece in the southwest. And that is an error that the European does make often, that it doesn't handle the southwest upper lows and southwest energies well. That's why you can't rule out the GFS that has the storm. But I want you to understand how complicated this is. It is these three pieces working together and how they work to produce the storm. Basically, what has to happen is you have, en you have to have enough energy coming out in the southern bands, branch. It's got to get out ahead of the northern branch. And if it does, you've got a storm because you've got loads of cold air. All right. So it's possible. Now, there is snow and ice coming into Texas. I want to... Let me show that to you now. We'll get that uh, done, and then we'll talk about what's going to happen later because I think everything is lined up for this to occur across Texas. This is the uh, snow that we're going to be looking at. This is mostly Thursday, Thursday night, not so much Friday, but thir uh, late Wednesday to Thursday night. And, you know, Dallas, I think Dallas is picking up a few inches of snow and sleet. Right now we have three to six inches, but there's going to be bands of over six inches of snow, I think, here. The cold air is locked into Texas, and the storm's going to form down in here in southeast Texas, then run to the east. So I think we're in the cold air, and there's a band of three to six inches, even maybe toward the Little Rock area here. This is going to be close. I mean, this is a formidable storm, formidable storm. This is mostly Thursday and Thursday night. And within this snow area, the southern reaches of this is probably going to have some sleet. You may get an inch or two of snow down toward Waco. I mean, this is going to be a, a, a pretty big system for Texas. The question is then, okay, I think the modeling is lined up for this. This looks pretty good to me. The question is, is what happens after that? Now, I want to take you to the modeling here. Let's pick this up on Wednesday.
So let me pick this up on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning. So here's what's going on. Here's the, here are the three separate pieces I showed you about. One, northern piece. Two, this is in the Pacific. And three, this is across the Inner Mountain West. So that's what makes this complicated. But I think no matter the modeling here, you see the same kind of solution. This is the American. This is European. American, European. There's some differences, but you've got, a, you've got moisture coming into Texas and in the Mid-South. That's why I don't think there's much debate on that. All right. You're going to get the snow and the sleet. Uh, and the accumulations I just showed you across Texas and Arkansas. Here's where it gets dicey. And right off the bat, you're going to be able to watch this. So what we're going to concentrate on is the strength of this northern piece and then how much of this energy in the southwest actually comes out and whether this can get out ahead of this northern piece. If it gets out ahead of the northern piece and you have enough energy, then we have a big storm. If you have some energy, but it doesn't quite get out ahead of this trough, it travels with it, then you have a flat wave and there's not going to be much happening. There'll still be some snow in the Midwest and the Northeast with this, but it wouldn't be a big deal. So let me show you the difference in modeling. Now, this is classic European. Watch what it does. Thursday morning, I want you to concentrate. Let's first concentrate on this. This is classic European. This is what the European does. Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. Now watch what happens Friday. You see all, all of a sudden, it's holding some of this energy back. A lot of this energy is back, and the trough is what I call splitting. You're going to have a piece moving out, but most of the energy lays back across the southwest. This is the European. This is Friday morning, Friday afternoon, Friday evening. You see that it splits the trough and just keeps the whole thing stretched out like a rubber band. European is doing that. The GFS, a lot different. Let's go back. European GFS. Let's go to Friday morning. Uh, European GFS, European GFS, European Friday morning, European GFS. Couple of things to note. Number one, there's the European, there's the GFS. Notice right off the bat, GFS is bringing more of this energy along. Also, which is just as critical, it is a stronger piece of energy here in the northern branch. You see that? Compare it to the European. Compare it to European. This is the American model. Europe, European. American, European. See? American, European. There's a difference. The, 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 and that's a big difference. Now, it's far off, but you can see the problem is. So the, what's happening is, is the European is already pushing this weaker piece east. It's weaker. It's not weaker. It's farther north and pushing it away. And it has more energy in the southern branch staying in the southwest, not coming out. So you have a weaker northern branch further north, a weaker southern branch that's not going to come out. It's going to get stretched out. And, and there's virtually no storm. That's the European. Watch the GFS, though. GFS says, uh-uh, this northern piece is stronger. Look at the difference just in the northern piece right? GFS European, GFS European. Look at the northern branch. Focus up in here. Look at the difference in here. European, no, GFS European, GFS European. And look at the southern branch. GFS on Friday morning, I'm sorry, Friday morning. Look at all this energy in here, right? Watch what the, watch what the European does. Same time frame. See, leaving it behind. GFS European, GFS European. Now, Saturday morning. European, GFS. European, GFS. Big differences with this upper low all the way down here. Where does European have it? Way up here. Watch. GFS. European. GFS. Look at that northern piece. So the GFS has it near St. Louis. The European has, has it over James Bay. And look at the difference in the southern piece of energy. It's all strung out here. So you don't have a consolidated piece. So you just have a weak wave that's going to go like this. But the GFS says, no, look at this. And then, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. The European, uh-uh, just moves it along. It's weak. The northern piece is way up to the north. There's that's I mean that's a huge difference. Look at this. Boom, boom. 
G- Europe, GFS European, GFS European, GFS European, GFS European. Hell, I can't even find a northern piece anymore on the G- European. It's, it's, it's weakened and moved on. You see that? Where did it go? It's just it's way over in here. That's a huge difference. And that's the difference between you want to see the difference in the modeling? All right. So that's what we're dealing with. Let me show you the surface map, and you can really see the differences here with the two modeling. So here we go. GFS European, not bad. This is 7 o'clock Thursday, pretty good. But then the differences start because, remember, the European has taken all that southwest energy and keeping it in the southwest, it strings it out. It also has the upper low way off to the north. So here's where it starts to go different. Here's the European. Very weak storm going across the southern tier of the country, which is, again... If I want to go back, that is this scenario right here. That's this scenario right here. Do this up December 29th, out to sea. That's the that's that's what the European is showing. Just out to sea. It's a weak wave. Nothing's going on, right? All right. Now I showed you the I showed you the European. GFS, nope. Now, we start out the same. This is Thursday night. GFS, European, GFS, European. Watch what happens Friday morning. GFS, European, not bad. Not bad. Pretty similar. Friday night, pretty similar. GFS, European, GFS, European. Now watch. GFS, European, and then here's the differences. Because of that wave, 1 o'clock Saturday. Yeah. European GFS out to European out the sea GFS up the coast and you've got a big snowstorm for Phil, Washington DC, Philadelphia, probably New York City, probably Boston, you'd get a foot of snow out of this. That's what the GFS is showing. Usually at this point in the storm I can give you an idea of what I think. I'm not there yet. And and part of the reason I'm not there is I want to go back to the map that I showed you from the get-go here. Look, these are the pieces. These are the pieces that will form the storm. One, two, three. I mean, it's all over the place. I mean, I'll, I'll say this, at least this piece is on the North American continent. This really isn't. This isn't. And I don't know where this is coming from in this area. So that's what I mean. You've got all of these pieces working together to create this storm. And they're all over the place right now. So I don't know. Now, my initial thought was that the European was probably going to be right. That was my initial thought. That this... This is the more likely scenario, a flat wave. Now, listen, you would still get, you because of this northern trough coming in here, you, you, you're going to get, you know, a coating to an inch or two of snow in this whole area Friday in the Saturday just because of this northern trough coming down. Let me go back to the upper air. You know, even on the European, I, I, I think there's at least some snow coming here because of this northern trough albeit the Europeans weaker with it, but still, you've got this northern piece of energy. You see this? This trough, right, coming east. So there's going to be snow with that trough as it works its way across the central plains and into the northeast, at least according to an inch of snow. It's not a big storm, but there's at least some snow. But, I mean, just look at the difference in the energy, you see? By the time you get into Saturday, there versus there, there versus there. There, European, GFS, European, GFS, European, GFS, European. Now, normally, my thought was, I tend to believe the European more than the GFS. Tend to. And again, there's the European. You see that little area of snow with it as well. And there's the GFS up the coast. Normally, I would believe the European. But one thing that's stopping me is that the European does have a problem I've noticed over the years, this was first taught to me, can't remember if it was Joe Bastardi, 
who taught me this when, when he worked here, or if it was Dr. Joe Sobel, or if it was uh, Nor Uncle Normie, Norm uh, McDonald. The European overdoes these southwest troughs a lot. They like to, it doesn't handle them well. Oftentimes they dig them or keep them far out here too much. And 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 it that's what the European has shown, but it's a, it has a bias for that. So that's why I can't rule out the GFS. I'm just not sure yet. I, I wish I can give you an answer. I don't have it. I am pretty sure about what's going to happen in Texas, which we showed you, but I'm just not sure whether this is out or up the coast yet. I don't know. And the ensembles don't know either. They're going to flip around. They're going to flip around like the operational models or the deterministic models do. Now, I will say this. The GFS has been consistently showing a storm. Now, it's jumping it up the coast, up, up, up the coast, out to sea, up the coast, out to sea. It's going back and forth. But it's continued to show this storm. The European has continued to show the flat wave. So let's just concentrate the next couple of days on this energy. How much is coming out? And then this northern piece is the key as well. Again, there's difference in modeling on this. Look at the difference by Friday morning, GFS European, GFS European. See, the European's already lifting it out, already lifting it out, while the GFS is keeping it locked in, and then it has more energy in, coming out of the southwest, and that's why we end up getting a storm coming up the coast. So let's keep an eye on this. I, I just don't have the answer for you right now. So keep updated. I'll keep you up. I'll keep you updated on X. We'll update this probably on Wednesday, but I'll be in touch before then. It's an interesting pattern. If you have any questions, you can follow me on X. I'm known at uh, Accurano. I'll answer your questions when I can. And we also do live streams on X, uh, similar to what I'm doing now, but they tend to be a little shorter. Oh, by the way, I'll just leave you with well. You already saw the snow map for Dallas, but again, snow coming to parts of the southeast. Let me show that to you right now. There it is. I'll leave this with you right now um, as we end this. There. There's your snow area, right? Including Dallas, including Little Rock, Interstate 20, Central Texas. Pretty big, pretty is a, a decent sized storm here. As, as we move forward. All right, if you have any questions, again, you can follow me on X. I'm at Accurano. Have a great Monday.